Okay, we're on the Champs Mastermind call with Bria Evenson, Wendy Kennedy, Alita Still, and Mr. Jamie Fitzpatrick. And Bria is going to talk to us about onboarding. So, Bria, you've got the floor. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to talk about this because um, I feel like when I started, there weren't any like I use the online office to get started. I mean, that's what it used to be. Like any type of training you needed was in there. I'm sure some of you guys can relate, but um, onboarding was very different. And uh, so I kind of, my first, especially my first year as a coach was like, well, that's what I did. So everyone else should, that's what they should do. Yeah, I didn't really think about the fact that I could be doing things to help onboard people. I just assumed everyone would figure it out for themselves, um, which is not very supportive. <laughs> but um, I started, I think even like last year, I started getting more focused on onboarding, of course, but it really like the new leader conference this year, I think helped me gain clarity on it, like gain clarity on how important, like what I should be focused on in that onboarding and the fact that the outcome of it is that my success club base is such a priority um, and, and to make sure that I'm still aware of what part is my business and what part is my team's business, like how I'm helping them. So I know that like everyone on here has different personalities and I, I do think there are diff like lots of different ways to do things. Um, but for me, this is sort of how I roll in terms of my onboarding. I thought I would just kind of share what I do. And over time, I've recognized that, I, like to me, in my business, onboarding is kind of divided into like two sections. One is training and one is coaching. And they're very different things. Um, I learned so much more through the interaction of people and Frankly, I, that's what I love about this business. Like it's the good part for me is like my connection, their close connections. I might not have massive amounts of people coming in, but the quality of my relationships with the people that I work with is what makes this so awesome for me. What's just what makes me want to keep going all the time. So I needed to figure out a way to kind of minimize the stuff that I don't love so much so that I could spend as much time as I can in the good parts. And that's where this understanding, I think of like the training versus coaching came into play. Um, so I used to feel really scattered all the time, just running my challenge groups. And of course, as my team grew, I knew that I had to have systems in place. So I'm sure like you guys, I have you know, my whole year is planned for my challenge groups. It's like, it's very simple. Every month, my prep week starts for my challenge group the very first week. So all, you know, my orders are coming in that week. So that success club is done and off the table by the fifth of the month. My challenge group starts the second week and my free group starts the third week, which is what then rolls and helps me start my invites into the next month. And I think this was what made me realize like, okay, I need to create a system like proper systems that kind of flow in that same manner for my, my coaches, my training and my coaching. Um, so here's what I do. I just created something and now it rolls every month the exact same pretty much like I have the whole year planned that kind of rolls and takes care of my training side. Um, so the very first week of every month is my internship and that's when it starts and it's a three week internship. It's essentially like a coach basics. I've customized it to work for me and the way I like to run this business because as Alita talked about last week, like the more we dive into our avatar, it becomes really easy, I think, to train the people that come into my business because they're like me. They learn like me. They think like me. They're passionate about the same things that I'm passionate. Not to say that there's not other people that come in and don't roll that way or even somewhere down the line, down like down line, it doesn't happen. But I find that um, because I'm trying to stay true to kind of who I am and how I like to do things, this seems to make it the easiest. So my intern is, is different from coach basics but you know covers a lot of the same things so my very first week of every month my internship starts it's three weeks long new coaches come into the internship um, and then by in the third week in the last week of the internship I do a seven-day push to emerald so basically anyone it kind of is always sifting right like it's sifting the people who are really willing everybody goes into the internship the people who are ready to work move on into the push to emerald group um, and the em push to emerald group is all focused around inviting to the sneak peek which is then in my fourth week of every month um, and and then the sneak peek closes back into the internship so it's a really simple and systematic and maybe you guys already do all this so it's nothing fancy there's not, any, not a lot of secrets in my presentation here but that is how my whole training side of this business goes it's the fourth week of the month 
you know, I've, I have a sneak peek. People are coming into the sneak peek. My team has something to invite into, into the sneak peek. Um, and I'm closing those people into the internship. And then I'm closing the internship into the push to Emerald. And that's sort of the initial onboarding training that I do. And, and as I said, for me, like coaching and training and onboarding my coaches has so much to do with like willing and able. Um, are these people willing? If they're willing, then they sift through, you know, this, these trainings so that I can help them with the able. That's where the coaching and the skill aspect comes in. I can help them get through the hard part. The same way we help our challengers get through the hard part of a challenge, we're helping our coaches get through the hard part of coaching, which is, to me, hitting success club. If a coach can hit success club, the rest is easy. It's like, I need to make sure that they are, if they're willing to put the work in, and then I can help them get able to get there. And then, I mean, gosh, recruiting is really just the simplest thing from your challenge groups. but. That, so that's how my um, like onboarding training goes. And then, of course, every other month I'm running a diamond. I, this is new. This is new training for me, but it seems to be working really well. I, last month I ran a diamond foundations group. So instead of putting people right into a push to diamond, we did a diamond foundations group. And I, it was, I found it really helpful because the whole focus of the foundations group was getting everyone to the team builder level. I think that's the level that it is, where they have to have um, like – to at least four people with success club points on their team and it just set them all up so that here in April I now have a bunch of diamonds that are at that or a bunch of emeralds that are at that team builder level and their businesses are primed to go diamond if they're going to put a little bit of effort and focus in they're going to they should go this month so I'll, I'll let you know how that goes but I think like that seems to be working so far for me and that's kind of my next advanced training that I do beyond the onboarding. And of course, I have an ongoing group and message thread with my current diamonds and, and above. Um, so for me, I think that this, like being systematic really helped me to help my team more. Like it allows my whole downline to invite into these things should they want to. Although any of my, like all my diamonds that are, you know, closing in on two star now, my star diamonds that are playing on two star, they're doing their own versions of this. Um, they've just taken what I've done and they make it their own and now they're running that way with their own team. But when I sit down every day, I start with my power hour, of course, and then I look at my calendar and I can see what's coming up next week, what I need to be inviting to in terms of like my training. So I know that um, in two weeks, I'm going to have a push to Emerald. So I'm going to need to start communicating with the people in my internship and the people who have been working it but aren't at Emerald yet to invite them into that group. The same way I would with the challenge group. It becomes very easy and systematic because I'm like, okay, what do I need to do next week? And then I just bang out my invites and it becomes a really simple process. I'm never wondering what the heck I'm supposed to do and who I'm inviting to because I know that no matter what, week one is this, week two is this, week three is this, and so on. Um, and I think it's helped my team always know what they can be inviting to. Because in the beginning, you know, as you know, it's like you're not going to necessarily run your own. Some hot shots will, but some people are very unsure of, their, of being able to create their own sneak peek. They don't have that confidence yet. So it seems to help that way. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so this sort of helps me know how to invite to it. How do I take it to my team so that they can invite to it? I talk about what I'm doing in all of the training groups. So the push to Emerald, of course, is during the week that we invite to the sneak peek, and then that rolls into the internship, as I said. And this is how I also know what to post about. So each week, I'm just inviting to the next thing, generating excitement, engaging interest. Um, yeah, and so my personally sponsored coaches are welcome to invite to my stuff, but as I said, once they enter the push to diamond group, we're all talking about them running their own stuff. I pair them up with a buddy in that group whose business is very similar, maybe they're similar time zones. This helps them form their success partnerships. Um, and, and then I am like, you need to run your own sneak peeks now. Like that's what you're doing at this point. Cause you're pe people need to see you as a leader. That was when my business took off was when I was like, okay, I need to do my own stuff. Um, and that's what I try to encourage them to do. And they just follow my plan or they make their own, whatever's going to work for them. So that's my onboarding side um, in terms of training. And then I think I move over to there's the coaching side. So I know that that's kind of systematic. It's off my mind. Of course, I check into my training groups, but I can hootsuite those posts so that I'm not having to post every single day, of course. So, you know, when it comes to coaching, of course, I have weekly team calls that, you know, offers information for people. but 
when I'm coaching that's specific to my personally sponsored coaches, which is where my coaching comes in, I don't necessarily one-on-one -on -one coach beyond that too often. Um, obviously someone signs up, I welcome them to the team and to my team page. They get a document with, um, like a welcome document, like I'm sure we've all heard with, I created a 10 day new coach launch. It's sort of a 10 point new coach launch and it's really basic stuff because I know they get stuff into the online office and it's great, but somehow my people seem to be overwhelmed by it. So it's, it's a little video of me telling them how to set up their websites, how to set up their EFT, more specifics on how to create that W8 Ben, because I know that in the beginning that's a sticking point for a lot of people. They get very overwhelmed by government documents. Um, you know, explaining what success club is and what the vital behaviors are, really basic info, because that's not what we're covering in the internship. We're covering more details on how to connect with people and how to use social media and how to invite your friends and things like that. Um, I plug them into the internship, and then here's where my coaching starts to kick in. Um, in week two of the internship, we have a one, I have a one-on-one -on -one call with my personally sponsored coaches. Um, and then, of course, the people that are in the group that aren't my PS coaches, they'll have a one-on-one -on -one call with their sponsor coach, or we'll have a three-way call, right, to get them uh, to make sure that the, my personally sponsored coach is comfortable coaching. But this is uh, the whole focus of that call. Of course, I'll answer their questions, but the whole focus of the call is to talk about their first challenge group. When will they have their first challenge group? How will they invite for it? Who are they inviting to? And do they want to co-coach with me or not? Um, because I think, and it was, again, it was sort of confirmed at the new leader conference for me, like success club really, I mean, obviously like is how we help people. So it's confirmation that we're helping people. It really is like your business lives and dies by it. If you can't hit success club, you can't be successful in this business. But if you can hit success club, then I think you can be supremely successful in it because as I said, recruiting happens so effortlessly after that. It's just a systematic thing. Um, so that's how I coach. And then I check in, of course, with my new and my working coaches every single week because I love the relationship side of it. So that's like what I, I feel like I do it and it doesn't even feel like work. It's the fun, really fun part of this for me. Um, and if they're struggling, then we can I set up a call to help them through that, the hard parts. And I'm there again to help them with the able. What are you stuck with? How can I share a script? Or how can I co-coach with you? Or what can we do to get through and re remove that hard part, that sticking point for you? Um, and just coach them. And so I try to open up my schedule. I've been, I was using Acuity Scheduling. I'm really liking this one now called Calendly. Um, and I basically, the first part of every month, I don't do coaching calls. I obviously open up, have a team call and I am working on hitting success club, but I try to get that done so fast so that the rest of my month I can open up some time to like do zoom live zoom coaching with my team. And that works for me. Um, so I'll do one-on-one -on -one zooms with my PS coaches, or I'll do like two on one or mini zooms with my PS coaches and their teams. And that was beneficial for me last year in going elite was kind of digging down into my downline a little bit and being like, let's get you and your team on a little call that's just for you. And we can talk about what they're struggling with. Um, and the coaches that were open to that last year really are the ones that are like leading in my team this year, I think, because they, they're obviously similar to me. They learned um, how, it, how it works well and, and off they've gone. Um, and that is kind of how I do it. The, the final bit that I would say I, that helps with my onboarding is that, I mean, I love seeing numbers. Um, I check my reports daily, the volume, the recruits and the sponsorship drill down so I can recognize people and see what's going on in their business. And I'll even do that for like my grandbabies. I'll like, I like to see when they've hit their, you know, added their first people, if they've moved in rank, you know, things like that. They've sold their first challenge pack just to recognize them for that. Um, Cause that means a lot to me when that happens and I can kind of encourage and help along the way. It seems to open our relationship a little bit, but um, I think that's it. Like I, 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 that's sort of how I finalize it. It's like looking, making sure every day I'm looking at those numbers so that I can recognize and kind of have that be the icing on the cake of my onboarding training and coaching. That is excellent. So I've got to ask you, are you an engineer or an accountant before you, were you one before being <laughs> body? I am a philosopher, according to my Queen's University degree. <laughs> okay. okay. I so, tell no, you why. but I, um, I did run a business, um, and I just, I don't know, I just like, I think the little numbers, first I got drilled into me, and there's something about seeing it that makes me feel 
gratified and organized and self-motivated, I guess. Absolutely. There's so much to take from this call. And I'm, as I'm sure everybody's that is listening is. Um, so if you guys have questions, jump in. I, I do have a few questions, but um, I love your internships. I love your uh, kind of how you find out the willing and able um, and now how it's very iterative, right? It's, you know, it's internship, push to Emerald, find out the willing and able, find out, you know, the cream that rises to the top, then, you know, Diamond Foundations groups, then, you know, push to Diamond and how you organize your people too. I think it's, it's very uh, smart how you organize it based on who your people are. Um, do you guys have questions? Because I can jump in and ask questions. I do. Um, I find... I've struggled with doing an email onboarding system and a group onboarding system because a group doesn't work for a lot of people um, based on their work schedules and then they get falling behind in posts. It's just a go at your own pace system for a lot of people who have full-time jobs isn't ideal for, for some people. So I'm, I'm currently running a group, but I used to do like an emailing system and, and I'm curious in your three week internship, if you have somebody who's just signed up in the middle of whatever, do you add them in and how do they not get lost in the middle of the internship? Like how do you get them started on day one when you're in week two? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't, once the first week has passed, I won't add anyone in because they can get so, there's enough that they could learn otherwise that yeah. um, like between like sort of the, like the 10, they can do the prep almost for the next one and we can have a call and kind of ease in because I, I find that you're right that people just kind of get overloaded. And for me, like I know people have a lot going on, but like we run groups. I know that there's the new challenge app, track app or app which allows us to take some challenge groups off of, of um, Facebook. But at the end of the day, like I like to look at the internship and any of the trainings, the way we look at a cut month, like the point is for you to dial in just for the, this small period of time and do a little bit more just for the, the way you would in a challenge group. So if now is not the time, that's okay. Like you, I'm going to, you can stay in it and kind of muddle along and then I'll just re-invite you to the next one. And that's kind I of, that was my second question was, do you yeah. let them be a repeat offender? Totally. I'll always. Yeah. I like basically I, anyone like I can see who participated until the end and if they didn't and they're not going anywhere, I just invite them again. And if they're not ready, then I move on. So another question then is when you're saying the willing and able, do you post in week two, like, okay, guys, now I'm doing a push to Emerald group. Whoever wants to join that to come in. Or do you personally message those people and say, I want you to join the next push to Emerald? Like, I'm curious as to how you navigate that just out of yeah. curiosity. I do both. Yeah. I post it publicly, but, and I actually wait. So my push to Emerald actually goes Thursday to Wednesday because I like to look at it like, it's in the third week of the internship, you know, and then we start on the Thursday, the beginning of the beach body week. And then, and obviously the sneak peek starts the next Monday. So they've got four days to invite to it, which is, I think seems to be enough time. And then hopefully by the end of the next week, they're going Emerald or they're close, you know, like they've moved faster that way. Yeah. Um, and it helps them qualify for leads in the next month. And it seems to, and not everybody goes like, absolutely not. But the last few months that I've run it, if like people have moved a lot faster and that desire to get in the next one, if they missed it is, is there. So yeah, thank you. It's been helpful. It really has. Cause I was like, I don't know how people, otherwise I didn't know how to keep track of everyone the same way. I feel like every time I do a, a sneak peek and then it, and then, yeah, start the new coach training and then the push to Emerald. Like it, it all just, it does really flow, but I haven't had a system month to month. Like it's like, okay, two months go by and I'm like, okay guys, let's do a sneak peek. So mm -hmm. tap into your challengers and, and you know, it's not, I'm not doing it every single month. I mean, we talked last week about volume of messages. Mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, my inbox right now is uh, crazy. Ah. So, so it takes me five to six hours a day to even address messages. So, so that's, that's why I struggle with, you know, I don't think I can run all these groups every month, mm -hmm. but somebody on the team might be able to run oh, them. Good. One of the leaders on the team, right? Like you said, you, you have your diamonds that are running it. So I'm just trying to figure out a different system because I keep trying to adopt somebody else's system. Mm -hmm. <sighs> somebody else's system doesn't work for me. Yeah. It has to be my system. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you have to... Yeah, yeah that's in your brain. Forward. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly failing forward. And so it's really nice to hear all the different ways that people do it. Um, I, I still, yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, I think that, Alida, you've got to find kind of what works for you. But I think you've also got to be careful to not, every time you hear a new system, change up your own system. No. Like where, because if I'm a coach in your team, I'm going, uh, we're doing this, and then we're doing that, right? And I think you, yeah. it's worth it to take a few things from everyone and then track it, keep it for 60 days, see how it works, totally. and, and be okay with it not working, by the way. We're in the middle of a new coach training system that I spent the last two weeks kind of developing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we're on day four. I really don't like how Monday and Tuesday went. I want to change those a little bit. It's like kind of finding where you can tweak it for the next system, yeah. but still have the same system. We have a new group starting in two weeks, so we're doing it every two weeks, like the internship like, that you're talking about. But I also want to tweak that document. There's a few things that I'm noticing that are causing confusion in the document. So, but definitely trying to, it's a very similar system, but just iron out the kinks to make it easy for everyone, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. So, uh, Bria, I've got a question and, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for this. Um, it's on the willing and able. Okay, so how do you systematize that? For instance, one that I talk about all the time is you're either one of three categories. You're one and you want, you're a discount coach that wants to get their products paid for. You only have five hours a week. You're a two, you want to get your products paid for and make an extra 500 to 1,000. You've got five to 10. Or you're a three and you want to make this happen and you've got 15 plus hours and you know, you're what it, you're ready to make it happen and make this at least a, a decent part-time income, if not a full-time income. So do you have such a system to kind of know where people fall or is that kind of a, a gut thing based on what you're saying and doing? Um, I mean, I have, I use streak um, as pipelines in terms of tracking where people currently are. Um, I don't feel like my downline's that big that I, I can't look at them and know at this point, but I, I'm hoping that it will be one day. So, um, so I use streak where I have a pipeline where it's like current, you know, discount coaches, inactive, you know, coaches, discount coaches, hobby coach, you know, or wherever, they, and then wherever they are in terms of rank. And I try not to worry about like differentiating hobby versus active it's like if you're not discount then you're active like that's just the way I look at it and but I still always go to the discount coaches before an internship or even before a sneak peek to be like are you willing are you willing to go into this you know is this your time if not great if so then I move them into the sneak peek almost so that they can get it my sneak peek really focuses on okay like how do I use social media to connect like how do we do that to create an online business because even though this is a networking business, it's very much online these days. And that's, I think, a freeing thing for people to not feel like they have to call their friends up to sell to them. So um, that's kind of how I start. You know, it's like, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? And then who's, and then as they go through at the end of a training, it's like, okay, who's been willing, actually followed through and committed? And how do we make you more able? Does that explain Absolutely. it? Absolutely, it does. It's just, you know, you have a, a series of uh, checkpoints and mm -hmm. the checkpoints will tell you who goes through them and who makes it down the road. And so yeah. that is why you're a five-star elite coach and that is how you onboard like a boss. Thank you, <laughs> <Dave and Sarah. laughs>